In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up this pool. I have it set up on a sandy area in our backyard. These are the water pipes. The water comes out of these two into the pump. Pump is currently not attached, as you can see. This one goes back into the pool. This is the pump. I kept it just for the purposes of this video. It's actually garbage. It's going to the dump very soon. We got a new pump, a sand filter, but well, this is the one that came with the pool. It's a cartridge filter. It lasted for about two or three months and then it just gave up and it made a terrible, terrible noise, which I actually took the pump apart. Noise couldn't be fixed and it couldn't be made to pump anymore. It was just, it was just dead after a month or two or two or three months. So we got a new pump for this year. This is the ladder that comes with the pool right here. It's the same on both sides, as you can see. We still need to iron out, not iron, flatten out these creases before we add water. So that's the last step we have to do. But we're gonna, in this video, get the pool to this point where we're able to add water and actually jump in. So as soon as you add water, you can jump in because the water that comes out of the taps, at least in North America, is clean water. So you can jump right in. After a few days, it'll start turning. So you wanna have your pump on there quite quickly, but you could theoretically start going in the pool immediately, which our kids love doing, even when it's just ankle deep. They're in here splashing around. So let's get to building this pool. Today we're gonna to put together our best way 16 foot diameter above ground pool. This is the pool liner that we're gonna put in our sanded area here. That's where we set it up. So we're gonna roll this out and lay it out first. Then we're gonna build the ring. These are the corners for the ring. These are the pieces that connect the corners to these straight pieces right in here. And then these are the feet. So once we have the full ring completed, we'll support them with these feet. I think there's 14 or 16 of them, maybe 20, I don't know. And then we'll have the pool up to about four feet high, pretty high. And then we're going to add our pipes. Then we're gonna connect our pump and then we fill it with water. So to get started, first let's roll this out. I'm gonna put the camera down and I'm probably gonna do this in double speed. You don't wanna sit here in real time watching this. And I'll highlight important stuff when it happens. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Let's get started. We've come to our first decision point. We've unrolled the liner pretty far. And we need to decide where we want the pump to be. So the pump has to connect to a pipe that's gonna to connect to there and there. So whatever side those are on is where the pump's gonna be. And in our yard, that far side where it is currently gets sun pretty much all day long and this side over here this end would be shaded by the pool and our outlet to plug it in is over in the corner over here what we're going to do is turn those pipes or turn the whole canvas so the the pipe connectors are on this corner then our pump is going to be mostly in the shade and the wire is not going to have to run across too much lawn to get to the house There we go. Can't really see it from this angle, but our outlets are here and over here. And I might adjust them a little bit more once we have the ring in, but now it's time to put or construct the ring that's gonna support the top of the pool and then attach the feet to that. Constructing the ring is pretty straightforward. We have this unit right here. This is the part that is part of the ring. This is the part that goes down to support the feet. So we take a ring arm unit, this long piece here, stick it in there. We line up these holes, then we put in a plastic stud, plastic screw, plastic something, right through there. Most of them you can do by hand. 
But just in case you can't, I always have my rubber mallet handy because you want them, this is not in far enough. You want them in all the way like that. So you have the notch sticking out and that hooks it in place. So I just showed this to you for demo purposes. You want to be doing this in the pool because it goes inside of the liner. In fact, I'll show you where that happens. So around the entire liner, we have loops like this one here. Just like that. And now you connect the next corner there and you keep going around and around through each loop. So the corners are in these gaps and these straight pieces go through the liner loop. Let's zoom back out so you can see the whole thing. Now we're gonna construct the ring. You probably noticed that I haven't been hitting the plastic screws as I go with our rubber mallet. That's because I usually build the ring and then I prop it up with the legs. Then the screws are much higher, much easier to pound. Not really pound, but just to tap in. And that's why I haven't done it as I go. The last corner piece that we're doing right now is always the hardest because it has the most tension on the ring now, but it's definitely starting to look more like a pool with that ring structure in place. Okay, the ring is in place. Now I want to adjust it a little bit before I put the legs on so I have those outlet pipes over here exactly where I want them. And the legs are also better done with two people if you have one person, you can do it, but it's easier with two. I changed my mind. After lifting it up, I think those outlets are just where I want them. And I'm going to go ahead and put the legs on. And as you can tell, our surface here is sand, but yours doesn't have to be. You can put it on your lawn, as long as it's level and smooth. You can put it on concrete. There is a tarp that comes with the pool that we're not using, but you can put a tarp underneath. If you put it on your lawn, it will kill your grass. Uh, but we just built this sand structure, just the easiest for us to do that. And now we're going to put the legs in. As you saw, that leg was a little challenging. That's because I'm a little slow today. They have a little knob you have to push in. And then that locks into place. And also we want to have that strap go around the outside of the leg. That's going to provide extra strength to the structure. I'm going to do two legs on this side. And then I'm going to do two directly opposite and then on opposite sides so the ring doesn't have so much tension on it and like i said it's easier with two people because you can each do one side at the same time but with one person it'll still work I'm just going to move the camera so you have a better view of what's happening. That's a bit better view. Don't mind all the junk laying around. Now that we have posts in on all or opposite corners, all four, 
we can now go in and put them in one by one all around because there's enough height and enough structure to just go one by one now. All the legs are in place. Now it looks like a serious pool. I want to shift it around a bit, which we'll do off camera. I just want to move it over a little bit, which will take two people. It's only me here right now. While we're waiting to do that, we can attach the hosing, which we need to add water to the pool. So the first area, you see this big hole here, that's the water return. And these are the water withdrawals. One end attaches to one outlet, other end attaches to the other one. And then this end attaches to the pump, which sucks the water out. It then filters the water. And then with this hose, it then sends the water back out through here. And this attachment here, you can add chlorine to it. This came with the pool, I believe. I believe it did. You can have chlorine in there. So you have a few small chunks. And then it'll chlorinate the water as it comes out after it's been filtered. I find that works okay. We also have just powdered chlorine that I dispense manually. So to add the hose here, we have these plastic wing nuts. They've got to loosen. All the hosing is plastic. All the, the studs that go to hold the ring on is, are plastic. Eventually they're going to get brittle and wear out. You have to replace them. Like this wing nut, for example. That's one of the reasons I want to keep it out of the sun. They'll still be exposed to chlorine from the water, so it's going to break down over time and have to be replaced. But for now, this is our second season with this pool. These still work. We try to get them on there as far as we can, and then we just tighten the wing nut. Don't want to go too tight. It is plastic. You'll break it if you go too tight as far as you can, which should be right up to the liner of the pool. Tighten that. Oh, I forgot something. These guys actually go on the other end of these. So, so now this guy, this guy's gonna go into here. Try to get it in there as far as you can, get it flush with the wall. Can you see what I'm doing? Cause I can't see the camera screen. I hope you can see it. Very hard with one hand, but you get that flush to the wall and then you tighten it on this end. So with two hands, rather easy and that's a bit of a macro filter so you don't have leaves and, and bigger gunk even though it's below the water line so those shouldn't get there anyway but just in case this is a macro filter to prevent those things from getting in the pump all done they feed into this tube here which attaches to our pump the pump that came with the pool in my opinion is garbage we had to we were able to use it all season last year but for the end of the season it made just a terrible noise and it barely filtered anything, probably for a whole month. It probably worked well for a month. No, worked well for two or three months and then busted for a month. And I bought a new pump this year. I'll show you that in a different video. Um, it's a sand filter pump. The, the pump that comes with this is a cartridge filter pump. I actually have it right over here. This is the pump right here. This is where the cartridge goes. This is the lid. Like I said, it only lasted one or, or sorry, two, two or three months, then it broke for the last month. It has a very long cord. The cord is like 30 feet. So you can have it pretty far from the house, which is a good thing, I suppose. Anyway, got a new pump. I just kept that for the purposes of making this video, actually. And now we've attached the pipes that get the water out to the pump. Now from the pump back into the pool, we attach over here. This is all in the instruction manual. The instruction manual, I personally found to be terrible, but that's just me. A lot of pictures that maybe don't make a whole lot of sense and then very few words. So this one, let's see, how do we do this one? Take that off. I think it's this one right here. So this one right here, This goes into the pool. So it's gonna stick through. It's got a rubber O-ring, keep water from coming out. Then we attach this one to tighten it to the pool.
Make sure it's nice and tight, otherwise it won't be watertight. And then we reattach, which end? This end right here. Make sure that's also nice and tight. And this piece up here, this actually allows you to stop the water flowing from the pump. So if you spin to the lock position, the water starts stops flowing from the pump temporarily into the pool. That allows you to change this cartridge more easily. That's really the only reason I can imagine doing that. Although with the with the old pump, which wasn't a very good pump, I would stop it and start it again. So I'd, I would close this off and lock it so the water wouldn't flow because there wasn't enough pressure coming from the pump. Let the pressure build up a bit and then I'd open it again. Then there'd be good pressure for a little while, but I have to keep doing that continually. Bit of a pain, but it worked. But a better pump should be a much, much better. So now we have two pipes. And those are gonna determine where our pump goes. So this is the pipe that goes into the pump. This is the pipe that comes out of the pump. So the pump's gotta go somewhere in this region down here, which I'm happy with because that's south, west, east. So the sun is always on that side of the pool. So this should be mostly in the shade. So I'm happy with that. Uh, also, it came with a ladder. This is the ladder right here. We just keep it together because there's no point taking it apart. And you just lift it into the pool. So let's just pretend. This probably won't be the exact spot we put it, but we just lift it up. We put it in there. And there's our ladder. We're going to eventually build a wooden deck around half of the pool. We just haven't done that yet. But now at this point, where we are now, like I said earlier, I want to shift the whole pool a little bit. But once the pool is in place where you want it, you want to go in here without water and make sure the liner is flat. All these creases, try to work them out because if you don't, the water will add a lot of weight on top of them and you won't be able to, to uncrease them once there's water in the pool. And you can see some dirty spots from last year. We'll, we'll scrub those out as we're filling the pool and then they'll be detached from the surface, get sucked into the pump, which is now a sand filter pump, so it's high quality and should remove all that no problem. And that's really the setup. Once you connect the pump, you have all the creases out, then you just fill it up and you're ready to play. When you're emptying it, there is a valve down here. You can open this. Let's open it right now, actually, since it's empty. So this has a little screw in it. Let me detach the camera from the tripod. Just hang on. This has a little screw in it. You undo that screw and a piece pops out, I believe, and you can attach a hose to this and all the water comes pouring out of here. So that's what you do when you want to winterize. It's way easier than uh, using buckets or siphoning the water off or whatever else you think you might want to do. You get a hose that fits on there. Make sure it's long enough to go to the nearest storm drain or just onto your, not your grass because it's got chlorine. Although you could leave the pool water in there for say a week or two after you're done using it, then the chlorine should be broken down. You can get a testing kit, you can test to make sure it's neutral, the water, and then you can let it just go onto your lawn. Cheap water for your lawn or your flowers or your garden. And this one's 16 feet. We have three kids, age nine, six and three, and two adults, me and my wife, and we enjoy this pool a lot. In fact, we also have an air conditioner in the house. And the year prior to having the pool, we used air conditioning quite regularly. But the year we had the pool, it was actually even hotter that summer than the summer before. And we used less air conditioning because we're in the pool more often. And it cools down your body temperature. Even though the house is still quite warm, you're quite cool. So it's helped with our air conditioning bills. It's not helped with the water bill though, because it takes quite a bit of water to fill the pool like this. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. This is our best way power steel pool and we like it a lot. <laughs>